are, do you have any ideas of how you know some of the things you saw at hacker school could be integrated into your traditional teaching at a, at a university? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I uh, I wrote a I wrote a blog post. <laughs> I read about everything um, <laughs> about my my experiences there, and the ending was really about. Um, all, I'm sure you have a link to that somewhere. The ending was all about what can we think about the hacker school experience taking a traditional education. I didn't like write a lot about it, but um, it's it's. Um, I think what I've done in my web programming class has been influenced a lot by that. So in my web programming class, I have basically two components. There is a you go to lecture and you listen to me talk and do some activities, and we give you exams on paper on these concepts. So the exams are all concept based, like you know. What does this code do? You know, if we, uh, you know, what is the difference between X and Y? Or Alice says that X should be the case, and Bob says Y should be the case. You know, who is actually right, and why are the other person wrong? So very conceptually based. And then the other half of the class is all pro as a group project that's very free form, and you just go for it. And we have milestones along the way. Like the first milestone is you better know how to create a database and insert something in the database. Second milestone is have a login system or whatever. And I felt like that combination was good because on one end there's the let's just hacker school it and uh, if I model my class after all hacker school it's just like all right 60 students group projects day one go go for it um, the other model is the you know uh, the rote mathematics model of every day we're going to go in and learn some concepts and uh, have you write code on paper and check your right around but you never code uh, so I mean, obviously the the balance is somewhere in the middle. Um, I think there's a, the advantage of the hacker school model is great. Um, one of the issues is that it really does require a very selective audience. Um, I, I wrote another blog post about this where I helped this uh, person who was in his 40s um, do programming very intensely for about a year, and we just I did tutoring over Skype, and that project-based thing worked really well there. And I saw the same in hacker school. But one of those things is that people just have a very high intrinsic motivation, right? They're obviously there to learn one thing, and um, then. In that way, all you have to do is just be a mentor and guide them along the way. Just, you know, they're stuck on something, you help them debug or you help them point a documentation. But I think for most students taking most classes, they're not going to be that enthused about it. Um, not just because they're not enthused in general, but because they're taking four or five classes. And unless that class happens to be awesome for them, you know, I remember taking 30 something classes in college. Most of them I would not have had the hacker school level of enthusiasm for, right? Like Economics 101, I'm not going to. Do awesome economics projects and run simulations. I just want to take a test. Um, so, I think the mix of project-based and um, it's a really hard thing. And you know, education is one of these things. Broadly, um, I've been reading a lot about it in the literature, both you know, popular literature and and it's one of these things that. Um, you know, education is sort of like psychology or the social sciences, where it's one of the things where like everybody thinks they're an armchair expert, right? And uh, and you know, whereas nobody thinks they're an armchair expert on string theory. Uh, only if you know string theory do you think you're an expert. But um, so there's these camps, right? There's one camp of the very um kind of a uh, uh, discovery-based learning, constructionist, self-guided, unschooling camp, and there's the other camp of very targeted learning, mentor-focused, and such, and um. People go back and forth about which is better for which settings and stuff. And there was a really interesting paper that Mark linked to that was about, um, you know, a, a set of researchers refuting a lot of the claims about discovery-based learning and such. Um, and then there's obviously a lot of these discovery-based freeform people who don't like formal instruction for various reasons. And my, in my very amateur take on, it, I think it's just the audience. I think if you have a very self-driven audience with a low student-teacher ratio, you can really do the hacker school thing well. But I think in a large classroom somewhere, it's going to be really hard to manage that. If you don't do that project-based model well, it just evolves into chaos. And I think a lot of students want more structure to it and uh, more structured learning goals, targeted feedback, all the stuff. Um, but again, I'm just armchairing at this point because I don't have <laughs> actually like, too much experience with this. But hopefully that helps. <laughs>